In a city called Thessaloniki in Greece, a man named Victor Radek met a German journalist named Greta Becker. Victor Radek met Greta Becker in a hotel room. According to their agreement, Victor came with several CIA documents that contained the scandals which could destroy America. Greta then asked how Victor could get the documents, but Victor refused to answer Greta's question. Unfortunately, when Greta was photographing documents for the news, Victor suddenly pulled out his gun. He then said that he wanted to be the one to break the news about the documents. Without thinking, Victor Radek mercilessly killed Greta Becker. After the incident, the news reported that Greta's death was carried out by the CIA. This was because Greta Becker was known as an outspoken critic of the CIA's activities in foreign countries. In addition, Greta's death sparked protests across Europe, because Greta was the third journalist to be killed in a month by the CIA. Regarding the incident, Greek Foreign Minister Hostas Leonteris said that the time when the CIA treated Europe like the Wild West was over. On the other hand, at CIA headquarters, an agent named Kate was busy checking CCTV footage around the hotel where Greta was killed. Victor was very professional as he chose to meet with Greta in a hotel that has no CCTV, which made the investigation difficult. However, after Kate spent several hours finding out about Greta's killer, she found a mysterious man walking behind three train passengers who were taking photos at the station. After she saw the suspicious man, Kate instantly used a face tracking device to confirm the man's face. Soon Kate managed to find photos of the three train passengers on their social media accounts. Then the suspicious man's face was seen, which turned out to be Victor Raddick who was walking behind the train passengers. Kate then reported the search results she did to her boss named O'Malley. After Kate delivered the search results about Victor Raddick, O'Malley was surprised. It was revealed that Victor Raddick was a former member of the CIA who had died 18 months ago. O'Malley then explained that Victor used to pose as an intermediary between the Russian Mafia and the Greek Mafia. Meanwhile, a man named Steve Vale applied for a job in a construction area. Steve claimed that he was a bricklayer. At one point, Steve went to a restaurant. He ordered food and then two people called Steve at the restaurant. The two people were Kate and O'Malley. From their conversation with Steve, it was revealed that Steve used to be a top CIA agent. Later, Kate and O'Malley explained the situation to Steve. Kate said that she found Victor's photo on a social media belonging to a train passenger recently. Steve, who heard the explanation, felt that it was impossible because Steve had witnessed firsthand how Victor was killed. Then O'Malley showed a photo of a Russian smuggler. It was known that the man died in an accident, but in fact, he was killed by Victor Radek about two years ago during Victor's secret mission at the CIA. Apart from that, O'Malley added that the smuggler's photo was found at the scene of Greta's murder. This showed that Victor wanted to convey the secret to the public. After O'Malley had a conversation with Steve, he decided to recruit Steve as a CIA agent once again. O'Malley also made plans to send Steve and Kate to Greece in order to capture Victor. At first, Steve refused to work with Kate, but O'Malley still insisted on giving them both a mission. O'Malley then reminded Steve that the chaos that Victor had caused was Steve's fault in the past. O'Malley's words implied that something had happened between Steve and Victor. Therefore, Steve should fix his mistake by taking responsibility for capturing Victor. Even so, Steve refused to rejoin the CIA. Later that night, as Steve worked on a brick wall, he remembered his past with Victor. Steve remembered the wonderful times when he was close to Victor's family. Amid Steve's daydreams, suddenly a bullet rushed into his stomach. Steve then immediately ran away for cover and looked at the gunmen who were shooting at him. It didn't take long before Steve was out there fighting them. Steve shot and even stabbed one of them. Steve also fought them with an iron bar. During the fight between Steve and several mysterious people, one of them said that they were sent by Victor. Hearing that Steve was finally able to defeat them all. For last night's events, Steve finally accepted O'Malley's offer to carry out a mission to Greece. Steve was assigned by O'Malley along with Kate to capture Victor. Steve left for Greece with only his carpentry tools. Even Steve and Kate went to Greece using a military plane to avoid airplane inspections. 
This was due to the fact that the Greek side had rejected the arrival of the CIA to the country. On the way, Kate learned information about Victor Raddick. Kate found out the fact that Victor's daughter and his pregnant wife were murdered. After a few hours, Steve and Kate arrived at Filippo's military airport. When they arrived, the military provided a car for the two of them. On the way to the hotel, Steve invited Kate to stop at a building. Steve then met an old friend named Patricio. They both looked familiar. Apparently, Patricio was the one who helped provide the disguise needs for Steve and Kate. Patricio prepared clothes, jewelry, phones, passports, credit cards, driver's licenses, and even weapons. Kate was surprised and curious to see all that, but Steve told Kate to take the weapons she wanted to carry out this mission. Steve took two guns while Kate took one gun for her. They both then changed clothes like a couple. Without Steve and Kate expecting it, Patricio also prepared a luxury car that he had modified. After Steve and Kate's preparations were complete, they left for the city of Thessaloniki. Steve took Kate to a luxury hotel. They would be staying at the luxury hotel during the mission. Once Steve and Kate were in the room, Kate tried to find answers to her wonder at Steve's preparations. Kate asked who was paying for everything they had gotten, but Steve, who heard that, only answered with a joke. Then while Kate showered, Steve went to visit the church he used to go to with Victor. He remembered when Victor gave a vinyl record to Steve. Then Steve was about to leave the church, and before that he put a phone in the usual place where Victor gave Steve the package. After he came to the church, Steve went to the head of the CIA agent named Ty at an art gallery. Steve's sudden arrival surprised Ty. Ty said that if the foreign minister named Costas Lanteris knew Steve was in Greece, then Steve would be arrested. However, Ty was again surprised to learn that Steve's purpose in coming to Greece was to find Victor, who was known to have been killed. Steve then asked Ty for help to tell where Steve could find a thug named Stan. It was learned that Stan was a thug who had dealt with Steve and Victor when they both completed dirty work. Ty said that Stan was no longer a thug but managed a club on the beach. After Steve got information from Ty about Stan, Steve went to a club on the beach according to Ty's directions. When Steve arrived at the club, he saw that indeed, Stan had become the boss escorted by several guards. In order to dispel Stan's suspicions, Steve claimed that he traveled to several countries for his honeymoon. This Steve meant to say indirectly that he was a rich man who no longer worked for the CIA. Steve then told Stan that his business had progressed. Steve concluded that there was someone who supported Stan behind his success. Steve then asked Stan to tell him about Victor's whereabouts. However, Stan insisted that Victor was dead. Stan even showed his men who surrounded him, seeing that Steve just attacked them all. After being satisfied with beating Stan and his men, Steve ran away. At the same time, Kate came to pick up Steve in a rental car. During the ride, the fact was revealed that Kate managed to track Steve with a device that she placed on Steve's shirt collar. Then Steve also explained that he managed to put the tracking device on Stan's shirt during the fight, so that Steve and Kate were able to track Stan's whereabouts through Kate's cell phone. Then Kate, who was still confused by Victor's case, asked Steve why Victor reportedly defected from the CIA. Steve clearly explained that Victor's disguise as an intermediary between the Russian Mafia and the Greek Mafia was exposed. As a result of that, the Russian Mafia killed Victor's daughter and his pregnant wife. Victor, who felt devastated and resentful of the Russian Mafia, took a number of revenge actions. Victor avenged the Russian Mafia by massacring the Russians in Greece, especially the Russians involved in the death of Victor's family. Due to Victor's chaos, the CIA assigned Steve to kill Victor, although in reality Victor was still alive. Meanwhile, at the CIA headquarters in Greece, Ty received a message in the form of a virus from Victor Radek. The content of the message was that Victor threatened that the American government would be overthrown due to rebellion from its own citizens. To prevent such a thing from happening, Victor asked for a payment of $100 million in bitcoins. At the same time, Steve and Kate managed to track the whereabouts of Stan's house. Instead of following Stan away, Steve took Kate to secretly enter Stan's house to look for evidence. Kate then opened Stan's laptop and found a map of the market in the city center. 
However, Kate had no idea what Stan meant by keeping the market map on his laptop. Meanwhile, Steve became suspicious of a brick installation in a place. Steve then decided to open the bricks. How surprised Steve was to find a number of secret documents hidden behind the bricks. Apart from that, Steve also found a mobile phone belonging to Greta Becker, the German journalist who Victor killed. Then Steve found that there was a newspaper article written by a journalist named Alikos Melis. By looking at the article, Steve and Kate concluded that the journalist was Victor's next target. In the midst of the tension, Steve and Kate heard the sound of people who approached them, so they both decided to hide. A few moments later, Stan's men walked in. At what Steve and Kate felt was the right time, they attacked the man. But unfortunately, Stan's man was stronger and had Steve cornered. Fortunately, Steve was able to grab his carpentry tools to finish the man off. The next day, Steve received a message from Patricio. Patricio informed Steve about the whereabouts of Alicos Melis, a journalist who was the next target of Victor. Knowing that, Steve and Kate invited Patricio to go to a market that Kate had seen on Stan's laptop, which was Emporio Square. When they arrived at Emporio Square, Kate and Steve split up to look for the possibility of Victor's presence in the market. Meanwhile, Patricio kept an eye on a journalist named Alicos Melis, who looked anxiously awaiting someone's arrival. After a while, Steve got a call from someone who turned out to be Victor. It was revealed that Victor contacted Steve with the phone that Steve had left at the church earlier. Steve, who realized that Victor was contacting him, kept talking on the phone while looking for Victor's whereabouts. Steve then warned Victor about the agreement they made, which was that Steve released Victor and Victor had to disappear forever. At the same time, Steve saw a man with a stature like Victor walking while calling. Seeing that, Steve immediately chased him. It was later revealed that Victor's revenge against the Russians had actually ended. However, Victor wanted to know who the CIA person was who exposed his former cover as an intermediary between the Russian Mafia and the Greek Mafia. Therefore, Victor deliberately killed journalists and framed the CIA for the deaths of the journalists that Victor killed. Furthermore, Victor also said that he sent three hitmen to kill Steve in the previous days. Victor chose to do that because he knew that Steve was aware of the CIA person who had blown Victor's cover, but Steve was covering up for the person who blew his cover. Hearing that Steve asked Victor to stop his actions. However, Victor didn't care instead threatening to kill Kate if Steve got in Victor's way. Elsewhere inside Emporio Square, Kate was seen having difficulties due to the riots that occurred. Moreover, Steve felt unlucky because the person he was following was not Victor, but someone else. At the same time, the real Victor was dealing with Alicos Melis. He shot the man dead in the head. This made market visitors very panicked. Then Steve, who saw Victor escaping on a motorcycle, then shot him. Unfortunately, he only managed to drop Victor's motorbike. Meanwhile, Victor managed to escape from Steve's pursuit. Then Patricio found a tablet belonging to Victor that fell. He decided to look for other information on the tablet. After the incident, Steve showed a photo of a Cuban ambassador to the UN that Steve found at the crime scene. Steve explained to Kate that the man was a CIA target. This meant that Victor had a list of active CIA targets. Hearing Steve's explanation, Kate planned to report it to O'Malley. But Steve tried to prevent Kate from contacting O'Malley. He suspected that O'Malley was working with Victor. Steve even claimed that he didn't trust anyone at the CIA. Sadly, Kate found out that Steve had previously met and talked to Ty. So, Kate assumed Steve was a hypocrite. After a tense day, the next day, Steve went to see Ty at Ty's apartment. Steve dressed up and knocked on Ty's door. Once inside Ty's apartment, Steve said his reason for meeting Ty was to hear Ty's old music collection. The conversation revealed that Steve and Ty had been together before. Moments later, Steve and Ty's initially relaxed conversation became tense when Steve expressed his feelings of disappointment in the CIA for blowing Victor's cover, which caused this whole chaos to happen. Ty, who heard that, was annoyed because according to her, Victor was the first to refuse the CIA's orders to carry out a mission. Victor's refusal was what made the CIA feel betrayed by Victor Raddick. 
After a conversation that made Ty and Steve tense, Steve then remembered when Steve and Victor were on vacation. They talked about a mission that Victor didn't want to do, which was to kill a politician. Steve at that time reminded Victor of the consequences Victor would receive if he didn't do the CIA's orders. Steve said that Victor was simply choosing to die if he ignored the CIA's orders. Even Steve also reminded Victor that the consequences he received would also get his family involved. However, Victor still insisted on refusing the mission from the CIA to kill the politician. Therefore, Victor asked Steve to take care of his daughter and wife. Later that evening, Steve woke up and he was still at Ty's apartment. Steve then told Ty about Victor's tablet that was with Patricio. Steve suggested that the tablet might contain important information about Victor's next move. When Ty heard that, Ty wanted to ask Steve for Victor's tablet. But Steve firmly refused Ty's request to take the tablet from him. Steve argued that he was still considering that Victor was his friend. He wanted to save Victor because Steve used to be unable to save Victor's daughter and his wife. To avenge his inability to help Victor's family, Steve was now able to save Victor. At the hotel, Kate checked the market CCTV. In the CCTV footage, Kate saw Steve was receiving a call from someone. Kate, who saw it, felt suspicious of Steve. At the same time, Steve arrived at the hotel. Knowing Steve was coming, Kate immediately expressed her curiosity and suspicion. She said that Victor didn't seem to be making a scene or killing journalists for money. Instead, Kate argued that Victor did it all to punish the CIA. She further added that the money that Victor was looking for was most likely for someone else. Kate tried to think about why O'Malley would send Steve on this mission if O'Malley was actually working with Victor, as Steve suspected. Therefore, Kate's suspicions were immediately directed at Steve. Kate then pointed a gun at Steve. She then checked Steve's phone and found an incoming call from an anonymous person. Kate thought that it was an incoming call from Victor. Steve, who knew he was being cornered, made no bones about the fact that he communicated with Victor. But Steve said that he communicated with Victor not to cooperate as Kate thought. Hearing that, Kate could only remain silent. Steve's words made Kate inattentive, so Steve managed to take Kate's gun and then turned the gun on Kate. Later that night, Steve and Kate went to Patricio's place, but they decided to wait for Patricio outside. While Kate and Steve waited for Patricio, they became suspicious of him because Patricio didn't answer Steve and Kate's calls. Then Steve and Kate made a decision to secretly enter Patricio's place. When they checked him in, they were surprised to see Patricio hanging and lifeless in a terrible condition. Steve knowing it was a decoy, he asked Kate to release the trap before removing Patricio's body. Then from the bag that hung on Patricio's body, Steve only found a bomb. Meanwhile, the Victor tablet that Patricio kept was gone. This suddenly made Steve suspect that Ty was involved in Patricio's murder that night because Steve realized that he had told Ty about Victor's tablet that was with Patricio. In addition, Steve also became suspicious that Victor had previously come to finish off Patricio. At the same time as Steve was guessing about the events of that night, Stan and his gang members entered the building or Patricio's place. They came with the purpose of finishing off Steve and Kate right then and there. Luckily, Steve and Kate realized that someone had come to the place besides the two of them. Until finally, Steve and Kate fought them all with all their might. A while later, after Steve managed to eliminate quite a number of Stan's men, Steve finally gave up due to the laser beam from Stan's remaining men. Moreover, Stan and his men also managed to take Kate as a hostage. Seeing Kate who could not move, Steve asked Stan to release Kate, while Steve chose to surrender himself. Stan, who heard about Steve's surrender, agreed to Steve's request for Stan to let Kate go. But Kate insisted on refusing to leave and even left Steve alone. An annoyed Steve urged Kate to leave or they would both die. Kate, who heard Steve's explanation, reluctantly chose to leave. Then as Kate walked away, Steve slowly approached Stan's men who were targeting him. Unexpectedly, Steve threw the bag containing the bomb on Patricio's body to Stan's men. Steve quickly shot the bag so that the bomb could eliminate Stan and his men along with Patricio's building. Kate, who was still waiting for Steve outside, was very happy when she saw Steve walking out of the burning building.
Kate didn't think that her partner could be that tough to fight and save himself. Then Steve and Kate continued their journey. On the way, Steve told Kate that he and Victor used to get a mission to finish off the foreign minister, Costas. Then Steve and Victor agreed not to take the job. They also chose to resign from the CIA. Their decision angered the CIA, which eventually blew Victor's cover as an intermediary between the Russian Mafia and the Greek Mafia to the Russian Mafia. Then after he explained his past duties, Steve thought that with Patricio's tragic death, he assumed that Victor could no longer be saved. Steve felt Victor had the heart to kill Patricio, who was their partner. Steve also insisted on finding Victor and telling him to end the chaos he had created. Besides that, Steve decided to finish off Victor. A few moments later, Kate got a message from O'Malley. The message contained the CIA's readiness to pay Victor with $100 million in Bitcoin. The next day, O'Malley arrived in Greece. He then called Kate and Steve to meet him. O'Malley explained that Victor asked Kate to make the delivery. He also added that if the Bitcoin delivery was made by someone else, the deal would be cancelled. Steve, who knew the deal, of course refused Victor's request. Steve was worried about the safety of his partner, Kate. Sadly, O'Malley has not responded well to Steve's worry. In fact, O'Malley suddenly said that Steve had been dismissed from the CIA. Steve, who heard that, immediately said that O'Malley's sudden decision implied something. Steve also cursed that O'Malley was the stupidest person the government paid. After that, Steve just left the CIA office. Then, after Steve left, O'Malley gave a flash disk containing $100 million in bitcoins as Victor wanted. Then O'Malley told Kate to go to the place where Kate had to give the bitcoin, according to O'Malley and Victor's agreement. Kate then hurried away from the CIA office. She went to a payphone on the side of the road to take the phone at the bottom. Then Kate saw a photo that was a clue for Kate to find the building. A few moments after Kate searched for the building Victor was referring to, Kate was finally able to find it. Kate then slowly entered the building. Until a while later, Kate almost entered a room to put a flash disk containing Bitcoin. But suddenly, someone silenced Kate's mouth from behind. It turned out that the person who silenced Kate was Steve who had secretly followed Kate. Steve then removed the tracking device and also the communication device that Kate was using. Then Steve gave her a car key and told her to get ready outside. Steve also asked for a flash disk with bitcoins for Victor. Then Steve looked for Victor's whereabouts in the room. Unfortunately, Steve only found a laptop on the table. Steve didn't think anything strange, he just installed the flash disk on the laptop. Once the flash disk was installed, the bitcoins began to be transferred. At the same time, Victor contacted Steve through the laptop monitor. Victor casually said that the next murder target was only one person. Victor told him that the next target was a task that he had not completed yet, which was the foreign minister named Costas. In addition, Victor also said that he would broadcast Costas' murder live to the whole world. Victor deliberately planned it so the CIA would really be accused of being guilty by the world. Steve was very upset to hear Victor's explanation. He then disconnected the internet connection on the laptop. Steve intended to get out of that place as soon as possible. However, when the internet disconnected, the door automatically closed and Steve couldn't open it again. Then Steve found that there was a bomb installed under the table that had been turned on. Steve had no choice but to push the table towards the wall just before the bomb exploded. After the explosion, the wounded Steve left the place. Steve saw Victor in a car and was about to hit Steve. Knowing that Victor was speeding, Steve quickly took cover in a trash can. Thankfully, Kate soon came to Steve. Steve then got in the car with Kate. So, there was a very tense car chase. Steve took a long time to catch up with Victor's car. But finally, Steve managed to crash Victor's car until it rolled over. Unfortunately, Steve, who hoped to find Victor injured, did not find Victor anywhere. Then Steve remembered Victor's plan to kill the foreign minister, Costas. Therefore, Steve immediately went to where Costas was making a speech in front of the public. When Steve arrived at the place, he was confused about Victor's whereabouts in the crowd. Luckily, after a few moments of searching for Victor, Steve found the man's whereabouts. Steve knew that Victor was among the reporters. 
He disguised himself as one of the reporters who was holding a camera. But unlike the other reporters, Victor hid his rifle next to the camera. Steve, who knew this, immediately looked for a way to ruin Victor's plan. Steve then found a sledgehammer around the location. He then started hitting the stage pole where Victor was standing. In no time, Steve managed to make Victor and the other reporters fall. When the stage fell, Victor also fell, but in helpless condition. Steve then approached Victor and apologized because Steve could not protect Victor's family in the past. Steve also asked Victor to surrender. However, Victor made a strange movement after hearing Steve's words. Due to Victor's movement, Steve reflexively opened fire on Victor. But how surprised Steve was to find out that the object Victor took was not a gun, but a photo. Sadly, the photo Victor took was of Steve with Victor's family, who were still together. In the midst of Steve and Victor's tension, the police came to surround Steve. The police then shot Steve unconscious. Some time went by, and Steve woke up in the hospital. Steve saw the presence of Kate and O'Malley there. Kate then said that Victor's tablet was found in the car. Unluckily, Kate didn't find the flash disk that contained the bitcoins. Hearing that O'Malley looked relaxed, he said that the CIA didn't care about bitcoin. O'Malley thought that the most important thing was that Costas had the thought that the CIA had saved him. O'Malley also added that the CIA had found Victor's statement that claimed he killed Costas on behalf of the CIA. In addition, they also found a list of all the assassinations Victor had committed. This evidence strengthened other evidence that the perpetrator of the murder wasn't part of the CIA. After O'Malley explained the situation, O'Malley decided to leave Steve's room and leave Kate there. Moments after O'Malley left, Kate told Steve that she suspected that O'Malley had taken the bitcoins. But Steve said that Kate didn't need to make trouble with O'Malley. Steve explained that people like O'Malley live for politics. Steve didn't understand O'Malley, so Steve couldn't fight an enemy he didn't understand. Then after Steve felt much more fit, in the evening Steve visited Ty's apartment. Steve's unexpected arrival left Ty puzzled and confused. Steve noticed that Ty was dressed neatly and was about to go out. However, Ty said the reason was that she was going out of town to calm down after all the incidents that had occurred. Steve then intended to play a vinyl record, but he accidentally found the record Victor had given him already set up. At the same time, Steve remembered Victor had said that he always listened to songs from the vinyl record. Looking at the vinyl record, Steve realized that Victor had met Ty before. After a while, Steve saw a number of men getting out of two cars that were heading to the apartment. At the same time, as Steve was about to turn around, Ty had a gun pointed at Steve's head. From there, it was revealed that Ty was the one who had given Victor the CIA's target list. Then Victor gave the woman a reward of $100 million in Bitcoin. Therefore, Victor blackmailed the CIA to get the money so he could pay Ty. This showed the reason why the Bitcoin was not found on Victor's tablet, because it was actually Ty who brought it. Even though Ty's secret has been revealed, Ty calmly left Steve because the men who got out of the car were hitmen to kill Steve. However, as Ty left Steve, Steve immediately took the explosives that Steve had stored in one of the vinyl record collections. Then Steve rushed to put the explosives in the oven that was lit. After that, Steve went to hide on the balcony to protect himself and avoid the explosion. Soon the hitmen entered Ty's apartment. They didn't find Steve there. They only noticed that the oven was on and beeping. One of the hitmen then opened the oven and there was an explosion that killed them. On the other hand, Steve was knocked down by the explosion. Unfortunately, Steve fell right in front of Ty, who was about to leave in his car. At the same time, Kate appeared and pointed a gun at Ty to keep her from running over Steve. Ty, who saw Kate carrying a gun instead of giving up, but she sped her car fast towards Steve and Kate. Seeing that, Kate was forced to shoot Ty until she died. Kate seemed to regret her actions that killed Ty. But Steve knew Kate had done the right thing. As a consequence of Kate's actions that shot Ty to death, Kate was banned from entering Greece. One day, Kate met O'Malley. She explained about Ty's involvement in Victor's murder. Surprisingly, O'Malley, who learned that Kate killed Ty, would not fire her but promote Kate. Unexpectedly, Kate refused O'Malley's offer. Kate told Steve that she decided to leave the CIA. 
Behind Kate's decision, it turned out that Kate listened to Steve's words, which told Kate not to deal with O'Malley. It was also revealed that O'Malley was the one who exposed Victor's cover to the Russian Mafia. So, the Russian Mafia was angry with Victor and killed Victor's family. At the end of the movie, Steve returned to his profession as a bricklayer. He finished his work that had been delayed because of the mission he had to do with Kate in Greece earlier.